All right. So good morning, everyone. My name is Najib, and welcome to uh, today's webinar. We're going to be talking about Wayfair's legal transformation journey. Are we going to have a discussion in Q&A with Andrew Moffat of Wayfair? Uh, but first, let's just uh, kind of go through a bit of uh, housekeeping on this one. Uh, there will be potentially some uh, future statements made. So we have a standard safe harbor notice. Uh, I always like to call out the fact that this is actually itself a legal request um, in ServiceNow parlance. And uh, we'd like to also kind of call out uh, that there are going to be some future webinars and 360 exchanges. And if you'd like to see what the schedule is, feel free right now. I'll just kind of pause here for about 30 seconds for you to take out your phone um, and grab a, uh, the QR code so that you can actually see all the events coming up. Okay. I'd also like to call your attention as a bit of housekeeping. There is a legal uh, intake poll. Uh, hopefully it's being displayed on your screen. If not, uh, feel free to just go in and click the polls tab so you'll be able to see it. Uh, this is going to be an open poll uh, for the next, I guess, you know, 10, 15 minutes, give or take, until we start talking with, uh, with Andrew, uh, which leads us directly into our um, agenda. We have some time. Um, uh, oh, sorry, just some housekeeping first. We have uh, saved time at the end for Q&A. Uh, you can use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen um, at any point. The presentation is going to be recorded and shared on the ServiceNow community. And after the event, we're going to ask you to fill out a short survey. So the agenda right now, I'm going to provide a quick little overview. Uh, the topic here specifically is about uh, Wayfair's legal transformation journey, but specifically around legal intake. So I'm going to talk a little bit about this. So you have some grounding. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but it's going to be about five minutes. We're then going to give you a demo of legal service delivery. Uh, Anna Margata Hughes is going to cover that. Uh, and then we're going to jump straight into the uh, the start of the show. Uh, we're going to talk with uh, Andrew uh, Moffat on Wayfair's legal transformation journey and then have some time for Q&A. Uh, once again, the uh, legal intake poll is there. Please do fill it out at your convenience. So just a quick little overview on, on what we're doing with legal service delivery. We recognize uh, in the market right now that demands on legal are increasing. Uh, we know that 80% of legal departments are unable to manage uh, th those workloads. Uh, you know, new rules, new regulations, compliance is kind of coming in. And so you're faced with, with a bit of a dilemma. Number one, continue working the way you were, but there's a better than even chance you're probably not getting the same resource or headcount that you did before. Um, uh, CFO may be cutting the budget, and as a result, you have a quandary. You have to work later, uh, in which case your spouse and kids probably aren't going to like you, uh, or you can work more efficiently. And that's the challenge. Um, we know that if you're trying to work more efficiently, the resources you have, whether it's people, processes, and tooling, is also not that effective. And as a result, you're spending 75% of your time on manual tasks. Um, the other issue that we've seen is the legal tap is, is not, accept, not addressing several gaps that we're seeing in the market. So when we talk to legal departments all around the world, we know that there's a desired state. Typically, it's always three pillars. They do want to be a strategic partner to the business. Now, if you're going to do that, you have to know all of the work that's coming in so that you can align that work to your business priorities. And we know you want to deliver stellar service. You need to be able to do that with a reduced cost, but you need to minimize risk to the company and you want to be able to address those issues in a timely manner. And then ultimately, that means you're going to be doing that work in an efficient and um, effective manner so that you can make data-driven decisions. To that, and what we'll be talking about in, in a bit more detail here is really the legal service delivery uh, value problem and, and the journey. And there's three parts of it. The first one is to get going and set up that front door. And that's what we'll be talking about later on today. That, that front door enables you to handle these legal intake requests and sometimes augment them with self-service experiences. Uh, and that's often paired with knowledge management so you can deflect back to the employee. Um, you can then take that information that's come in and structured, and you can actually re review that within a legal counsel center. And that's the second pillar for uh, legal service delivery. You have that intake uh, in a way that is structured that allows your legal team, your legal staff, your paralegals to be able to analyze it and act on it and act on the, the, the most appropriate high priority stuff. And then you can look at the insights that are coming in uh, and take action on it with real-time dashboards. Finally, um, if we look at that overall and those three pillars, what does that really mean? We view legal service delivery as a control tower. If any of you watch CNBC or news, you will often see our CEO talking about uh, ServiceNow and the role it plays. 
And legal service delivery very much falls into that as a legal control tower. Air traffic control, effectively, we're able to structure all that intake coming in because we are a strategic platform. And we do that through the employee center. We have the council center. We have requests. Internal matter management, configurable workflows, we're adding more all the time. And then, of course, the insights that, that allow you to actually take action um, and, and start you know, using data-backed insights to drive the next step in your transformation. There are a series of legal practice applications. Uh, contact your, your, your sales or account representative to find out about them. We're adding, again, more of these all the time, but out of the box, it's, it's quite quick to turn this particular system on. Anyway, that was me in five minutes. So I'm now going to turn it on over to Anna Margotta Hughes to take you through just a very quick uh, demo of what this is. And then we're going to jump straight into the Q&A and discussion with Andrew. Great. Thanks, Najib. I am about to share my screen. And let me just confirm that you can see a very similar uh, slide to what Najib showed earlier. So are you seeing that? And is it in presentation mode? Yes. Perfect. OK. And so I do like to start with this slide. I only have two. And then we'll jump right into the demo. And I'd like to highlight in ServiceNow Green what you will achieve with legal service delivery. First of all, tracking all legal requests. And um, <clears throat> meaning that those legal requests are not in spreadsheets, aren't in emails. Um, they may originate in emails, but they will come into legal service delivery as if they came in through a portal, for example. So being able to very quickly and easily track all legal requests. Because they've come in in a structured fashion, you're going to see the Legal Counsel Center and see how that will help increase practitioner productivity. And then finally, because everything is out of email and out of spreadsheets, you're going to be able to use ServiceNow to gain insight into the work that your legal teams are doing and see how the work is organized across those teams. In order to do this, we're going to start with Nicole, who is an employee, and she's going to be able to self-serve. If that fails her, she can certainly add a legal request and then get that um, request worked on by Susan, who has this great dashboard to work from where her work is very nicely organized for her. And then finally, um, we've got Dominic, who's going to be looking at insights and reports about what's been going on with legal. So let's go ahead and come in as our friend Nicole. And we've got um, her dashboard or her employee portal. And of course, legal is an important part of that employee portal. Now you'll notice where uh, when you go into legal, it, it can be broken down into various practice areas, but we're gonna go ahead and just browse all legal to give you a sense of what that might look like. So for example, conflict of interest disclosures, gifts and meals. I love this one because this time of year, and in fact, we just received a push from ServiceNow reminding us about our gifts and meals policy. And you can see lots of other um, information and articles. Now I could have ser simply searched uh, from the uh, top search bar. As Najib mentioned earlier, the safe harbor statement, maybe I'm uh, creating a new customer facing pow uh, presentation, a PowerPoint. And I know there's a slide I'm supposed to put in front of it. I don't know what it's called, but I know it's a PowerPoint slide. I can simply type in PowerPoint slide in my search and you'll notice I am pushed that safe harbor statement. But let's just say that that doesn't resonate with me. I didn't realize that's what it was called. So then I can simply go into legal and uh, go ahead and do a general legal request and look for um, and ask for someone to give me that in my general legal request. So I've got my general legal request here and I'm going to start typing PowerPoint slide. Once again, ServiceNow is anticipating what I need and sending me once again that opportunity to get that safe harbor statement. So really doing all of these things to help 
you with tier zero support so employees can do this for themselves. Um, have a customer presentation. And so we're gonna go ahead and submit that. Again, Safe Harbor did not resonate with her. So with that, Nicole has created a simple uh, general legal request. And you'll see in a moment that it's going to be assigned to our friend, Susan. So now if we jump over to our friend, Susan, what you're seeing here is her legal counsel center. This is the organization of her work. You can see she's got legal requests, matters, and to in service now, a legal matter is a more complex legal request. It might have phases, stages, approvers, lots of work goes into those matters. And also she's got tasks that matter tasks that may have been assigned to her from others on the legal team. You can see she's got a pending approval. Um, <clears throat> And then she's got her um, requests uh, that are detailed out and opened for her. Let's go ahead and just refresh that. And what you'll see is the PowerPoint slide request just came in. Um, also, you can see other types of reports and links that are right at her fingertips, which you'll notice she's not sifting through emails. She's not going to a... Um, a spreadsheet to add this request. She's not taking notes from a phone call. She's simply coming to the Legal Counsel Center and she is able to work on this immediately. She's gonna go ahead and start work. And she knows that she was asked for a PowerPoint slide to put in front of her presentation. What you'll notice over to the right here, Counsel Assist, PowerPoint slide. ServiceNow knows what Nicole was asking for. And so rather than having to go and find that safe harbor statement on my hard drive somewhere, Susan can simply attach that. And she might be a little more verbose and say, hey, check back here periodically. Uh, you can find this for yourself. Um, she may go ahead um, so that Nicole will get the idea that she can do these things for herself. So if we jump back over to Nicole now, you can see right there, she's got the safe harbor statement. We're going to explain to her what it is, and we're actually going to provide her in a PowerPoint slide the link to that uh, safe harbor statement so that she can go ahead. Actually, I've got it up on my other screen. Let me see if I can slide that over. Um, it's actually in PowerPoint format. So she can go ahead and put that right into the front of her deck. Oops, it must be behind here. There we go, right in PowerPoint format. So I'm gonna move that back and we're gonna go back. <clears throat> uh, so that will go back to our friend in our legal counsel center. She's gonna go ahead. Um, Susan is close complete because she believes, uh, uh, let me know if you have any other issues, say okay. Then if we jump back to Nicole, you can see that it is now in a close complete status. But if we didn't fully answer her question, she can go ahead and reopen the request. So, so far you've seen um, an employee self-serve. We really tried hard to push that safe harbor statement to her without creating a legal request. When she did recreate a legal request, it went to Susan in a very orderly fashion for her to be able to quickly and efficiently answer the question. Because everything is in service now and not in emails and spreadsheets, now you have the opportunity to report on those quest requests. So Dominic here is uh, in legal operations. He knows how many requests are open, unassigned, how many matters we're working on, and all sorts of information about the requests that are coming in, including an importantly trend analysis. So we can start to understand the trends and what's happening month over month, year over year, et cetera. So that was a really quick flyby 
of what ServiceNow Legal Service Delivery can offer to you and your organization. So mm -hmm. from here, we're gonna go ahead and go into the really interesting part and that is talking to Andrew about uh, Wayfair's uh, experience with legal service delivery. Fantastic, all right, great. I will just take back the screen here. And uh, just again, friendly reminder to the uh, poll, um, we'll leave it for another, we'll continue leaving it open and then we'll just do the introductions then we'll jump right in. I just want to verify you are seeing the correct screen for me. Perfect. And all right, let's jump straight into the speaker. So I'll be your moderator today. Uh, my name is Najib. I've been in product management for a good amount of time at ServiceNow, and now I'm actually starting to represent more our alliances and channels uh, organization. But we're delighted here to speak with Andrew Moffat. Andrew is the head of product um, for legal technology at Wayfair. Andrew, um, can you um, maybe tell us just a little bit more about yourself in, in, in your own words? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Thank, uh, Thanks for the introduction. And Anna, thanks for running us through a high-level demo. Um, really appreciate that. Um, yeah, I lead product over at uh, Wayfair for the legal technology team, where I spearhead a lot of our technology solutions to support various legal and legal driving initiatives across our organization globally. Um, as many GCs or general counsels across the board have really seen an expansion in their role um, and scope over the last several years, Wayfair is very much in the, in the same lane. Um, our legal sphere encompasses everything from product and supplier compliance to global security, litigation and employment, um, customs and, and Europe expansion, as well as real estate, privacy and, and legal operations. And so um, across the board, we have about eight verticals that we support. Um, and, and we drive those legal tech, we drive those technology teams to support those verticals over here at Wayfair. Fantastic. Well, I think um, that puts us in a unique position here to actually share the results of, of the poll, which um, I think can lead right into our, 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 our questions here. So can everybody see the poll results, by the way, or? I have invisible on my side. Perfect. Fantastic. So um, the most interesting thing about this is that when people are starting their legal transformation journey, um, it, it's we, we tend to think they're always kind of using very specific tools. But in many cases, email and spreadsheets is still nearly 50 percent, or in this case, 45 percent, uh, based on the stats that we're seeing here. Um, several people, however, do also have homegrown solutions. And I think that's also a, a little bit um, unique, um, Andrew, because I think when, when you came into this conversation, that was a, a setup that, that that Wayfair had. Can you tell us a little bit about that and, and kind of what your thinking was as how you started to approach transformation? What was in place and, and where you felt um, the need to kind of you know move it forward in a more structured way? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, being realistic, I don't know if we'll ever 100% move away from email and, and spreadsheets. I think within our space, um, working with attorneys across the board in a wide area of verticals, uh, we all have a natural uh, draw to just jump in straight into a spreadsheet or shooting an email. And so um, I think that's something that will always exist and really leveraging tools um, such as ServiceNow uh, as a, a real driver into moving us out of that structure and into something that actually has more broad support and is integrated across our solutions. As you saw in the demo Anna provided earlier, and this is how we leverage it at Wayfair, is that now it's really taking that extra step to have the, the ServiceNow solution that we leverage to really help integrate and bring all of these pieces into one space um, so that we can continue to automate and, and streamline a lot of our services that we have. This really does help our, our team get away from having to be stuck in the weeds of not only spending time sifting through a bunch of data, either in a spreadsheet or, or trying to relocate that email um, and really trying to streamline that process so that we're not wasting so much time on those meticulous tasks. And so by leveraging our solution in, in partnership with ServiceNow, it really does allow us to not only automate and streamline that, but then have all of that information right at our fingertips in one spot. Um, of course, Wayfair across the board, we do have proprietary solutions. We're a large tech organization. Um, and so we do have some homegrown solutions, but not specifically for legal. But what's great about ServiceNow and how we leverage ServiceNow across the organization for a wide range of capacities is that it does allow us to integrate with some of those solutions that we do have in-house. And so 
um, being flexible and having that agility to integrate and bring in and connect some of those services that we have internally um, really does uh, boost the 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 strength and the and the power that we get from our service now solution. Fantastic. Um, one of the things I think that that again made, made I guess way for a bit unique, and, and we see this in, in other organizations too, is some people will say we have you know a a platform here, and ServiceNow is is one. There are other platforms as well, um, but prior to adoption of, of the legal service delivery module, which is made by ServiceNow and on top of ServiceNow. Um, Wayfair, um, as we know, it was kind of using a just a homegrown ticketing system on ServiceNow. What do you think what was the underlying rationale, or or can you maybe take us through some of the challenges that, that you might have seen, you know, in just a simple ticketing system versus a purpose built solution? Right. Yeah. And those that the solution that we were truly leveraging was really more of a light touch workflow. And so really by having this, um, by having leveraging the, the legal portal that we leverage now with ServiceNow, again, it really does allow our attorneys to practice at the top of their certificates, getting them out of the weeds um, and really allowing them to continue to practice um, in their area of expertise. And so that's really what was a driver for this piece. Um, as you mentioned, we were leveraging, um, again, a more light touch ticketing flow system that was disparate across the organization. And it didn't always have that streamlined approach of where it would integrate with different teams or verticals across the business, even those that are outside of um, the legal team or our broader organization or department here at Wayfair. And so the, by taking that extra step and leveraging um, the, the legal portal that we leverage today that really allows not only our team to be more efficient, but also our business partners to be more efficient, how they can communicate, raise questions or concerns um, across their own verticals and their domains. And so it really not only helps our team be more efficient, but really pushes the business forward in creating that connection and that connectivity of really allowing our internal teams to communicate and collaborate with our legal partners. Mm -hmm. In terms of that connection and connectivity, I think uh, it's maybe worthwhile to play upon this. The platforms have generic uh, language, so it is a ticket. It, 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 it is it is an intake of some sort. Um, and, and with the legal service delivery platform, we we introduced two building blocks, which you, you saw in the demo today. One was the, the notion of a legal request, which is for legal intake. And then also uh, ServiceNow, our own kind of notion of, of a matter. Um, and, and just as a sidebar here for everyone on the call, um, matter management, uh, many of you probably heard me on independent calls. Matter management is often associated with electronic billing or, or spend management solutions. And, and it's it's really what we've seen is it was geared for external matter management. So, so dealing with uh, law firms and putting work out. What we saw as a, as a very large gap in the market, frankly, was the notion of internal matter management, uh, getting your ducks organized and, and getting everything structured before. So to kind of come back to that connectivity thread, how has that that I guess that lingo um, worked in in favor for for kind of you know, looking at those analytics and those insights at Wayfair before it has to go out to external counsel? Um, would did you see a higher level of adoption or higher level of familiarity and fit with your teams on this? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think you know we do have a matter management solution that we leverage, as you mentioned, in partnership with our our outside counsel or some of our resources. Um, that we leverage and connect with um, that are outside of the, the Wayfair environment. Um, and, and by doing so, uh, that does allow us to engage with them free-flowing, especially around the e-billing. And now what's great about this solution it, it, with our legal service delivery is that by bringing this in, um, it does create these matters, it's these large, what a lot of our other programs uh, would refer to as projects. It really does allow us to create that connection of our internal matters, our internal initiatives um, that really do drive a lot of our technical um, aspects within the, the legal space and the legal technology uh, specifically. But then also it's taking that step of where it does allow us to streamline that connection to our, our more third-party vendor that we leverage for um, matter management in connection to e-billing with, with some of our outside counsel. It, it, it's one thing that, that we're, we're very proud of. It, it, it's a very complementary solution. It's not meant to kind of re replace um, the electronic yeah, billing systems out there. But up until that point, the ability to engage with internal stakeholders, uh, to set up shared services teams. It's one thing that we're seeing as a massive trend in the industry right now. Sometimes 
you have so much work. So, you know, a, a general counsel will come in and say, hey, how busy are you in the last members of the team? Uh, and the team will be like, I, I need more support, more resource. And so there isn't really the ability to spin up a shared services team or see the insights or analytics. And so that's where our internal matter management concept becomes really good to give you that insight before you even go um, externally to it. Um, from a change management perspective, if you were looking at this, um, what degree would you say your, your, your executive leadership had you know, digital transformation of legal operations you know, on their radar? And what was you know, their perception uh, of the need for the solution? Yeah, um, well, at, well, at Wayfair, you know, it's real cultural. It's a, it's part of our culture to really continue to innovate and leverage tools um, that, again, help us automate and get us out of the weeds. Really reducing some of those meticulous tasks that we all get stuck in, and so. Um, it was it was pretty straightforward with some of our innovative leadership at, within our legal department. We really are more of a, a team of yes, or how do we enable the business um, to expand and to be successful, ultimately to ensure that we're serving our customers um, at, at our highest ability and providing them with the best experience. And as we continue to look at some of these solutions that we leverage within legal departments, we're really trying to hone in on tools that can be extremely flexible, that continue to integrate, um, and that can do more than, uh, let's just say, a singular task or, or solve a, a single problem. And that's what we really did look at and value so much with our legal service delivery tools is that it really does allow us to engage with not only a lot of our, our internal legacy data that we have, but also continue to streamline some of those other tools and engagement with some of our other verticals. And really within our legal department, we're constantly trying to lean in on some of the innovative technologies within the space to ensure that we are continuing to, um, to grow, but also to unlock the business in, in a wide range of, of verticals. And that was very much a part of our culture. And so it was very natural for us to say, hey, we have you know, a streamlined, uh, straightforward ticketing through service now, but is there anything we can do to really take that extra step to really pull in a lot of these additional use cases, a lot of these additional features that we're looking for into a single tool? Is that something we have to do internally or, or is there a tool on the market that we can actually take that extra step? Um, and that's when we discovered and realized that we would be a good fit for um, the legal service delivery uh, solution provided by ServiceNow. And, and we did partner um, with Cloves, one of our, uh, which is very, also very familiar within this space, and also some of our internal engineers that were able to connect the, the delivery, the service delivery tools that we have with ServiceNow um, to our internal solutions. And by doing so, Leadership really started to not only buy into the idea as they really did already at the forefront, but also feel the impacts of allowing our teams to have access to all of this data and a lot of these legacy um, legal documents, per se, all in one place. And so it not only were they leaning in to begin with as a culture of trying to continue to innovate, but also once we really were able to identify those champions that were maybe familiar with the ticketing service we already leveraged or were excited to um, embrace some of the improvements that we received and some of the efficiencies that we gained um, by taking this extra step and then really starting to have that impact be felt across the team. You can really feel when you're starting to be more efficient within your daily lives and, and you're not getting stuck um, in some of those more annoying and meticulous tasks. Which is fantastic and and um, great, great to... Um see that you had a kind of a partner along for the journey. Um, I'd actually like to kind of like dive into that a little bit too. One of the things we, we've seen sometimes it's a natural tension, um, given ServiceNow's pedigree, sometimes people think, oh, we can just, just you know, build it. And we always have that, that build versus buy dynamic just kind of beneath the surface. So what would you say was your rationale in terms of moving to, to a partner um, or, or using a partner as part of the um, onboarding and deployment process um, for legal service delivery? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, it's really trying to be forward thinking and understanding, you know, where are we putting our priorities? Do we really want to invest the time into trying to replicate something that the market has already solved? Or do we actually lean into um, that buy aspect of really leveraging some of the expertise and some of the tools that are already existing on the market or within the marketplace? And so this was going through, um, I'd say, a, a rigorous 
uh, discovery process and really evaluating the market and then understanding our internal environment and our internal tech stack and what made the most sense. But then also not to, not to, um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention our, our users and what they're already comfortable with, what feels like a natural transition or a natural next step and, and having some familiarity already with service now, we really did pay that extra attention to detail when, when evaluating some of the, the solutions within the market. And that's where we landed with the, the legal service delivery um, tools that we have. And that's what we're leveraging today. It felt very natural, felt like an organic next step, understanding that um, we have teams and also people within our team uh, that have already had some familiarity with the service now user interface. And, and so it just felt like a very natural transition um, to really take that extra step to go a little deeper with our partnership with ServiceNow. And so that was also a, a key factor when we were coming up with uh, the, the best solution for something that we wanted to do and stick with long term. The last thing we want to do within our legal team is to identify a vendor or a tool within the marketplace that, that's not fully um, ironed out and doesn't really have the reputation that service now does within this space and then have to go over again and again with this change change management of, of constantly swap, swapping out tools. And so, again, we wanted to not only identify something that solved our use cases um, and that was a good fit within the marketplace and also the familiarity with our teams, but also something that we could continue to iterate on and continue to partner with and also having that good faith of understanding that the legal service delivery solution is going to also continue to progress and, and to expand and innovate. And so having that forward thinking and, and understanding that it would be a good solution for us in the long term really did make it a, a, a more natural decision and next step for us. Yeah. And, and if we had to, so, I mean, one, you, you you kind of had the existing legacy ticketing system. You, you kind of recognized the, the need for change. You wanted something the users were familiar with, um, which was a natural stepping point for LSD. And then you brought in uh, your partner close to help deploy it. Um, when you started the deployment, this is another thing that, that I like to kind of just mention. We, we do see sometimes that there's a desire to go from a, a version 1.0 deployment to like a version 5 deployment overnight. And so the notion of kind of, you know, taking baby steps and a, a kind of a change management approach, where would you say you are right now in your journey? And what would you say is your wider vision for, um, I guess, the legal service delivery product and how it integrates within your, your legal ecosystem? Yeah, um, you know, within the LSD solution that we leverage, we really, we about, I think we have about 15 portals um, or components that we're uh, le leveraging today. Everything from B2B to FinTech and loyalty to um, tax and, and NDAs to risk and insurance. And so we really are, um, you know, running the gamut of making sure that we are leaning into some of the solutions that are offered um, as Anna ran over in her, uh, her, convert or her demo at the top of this call. It really allows us to then take stock into what's working and, and where we can see improvements, both within our internal solutions that we have and, and how those services are connected with our LSD solution. And then where can we streamline or reduce some of those uh, inefficiencies we have. And that going through that process and really engaging with our internal stakeholders, our champions that leverage and use these uh, these portals uh, or components within the LSD solution on a regular basis to ensure that we are not only leveraging the fullest capacity of what's offered through the, the solution, but also that it's properly connected with our internal um, spaces and services that work, you know, having access to the accurate data, real time information, the, the document storage that might be shared or collected um, across other verticals and ensuring that those inefficiencies or any gaps in that front are addressed so that we can continue to ensure that the solution we're leveraging with the LSD is set up for success and that our that our everyday users that our legal team has the confidence in knowing that everything is being ported in correctly and is connected throughout the, the environment that Wayfair uh, leverages with our, our global scope, um, especially when it comes to legal and uh, legal driving initiatives. That's great. So uh, I guess from, from where we're sitting right now, if you had to look at the, I guess, the positive outcomes collectively, that the lessons learned in terms of your, your, your deployment, if you had to summarize that, how, how would you... Um, how would you describe that? Yeah, it was a, you know, it was a fairly smooth 
uh, deployment. It was a it was a really smooth partnership uh, with our internal and external partners in the space. And you know, it's not our it's not our first go at uh, trying to launch broad technology solutions across Wayfair. And so, to one benefit, we do have the the experience within the tech space to be able to leverage um, you know the right tools at the right time, bring in the right stakeholders. And in terms of outcomes of doing so, we we immediately saw, for example, a reduction in our ticketing queue. And so that was something that we were able to immediately address as, as a, a positive impact, because by having these services connected, it, it really allowed our teams, again, to jump right into the work, opposed to trying to make sure that one ticket made it through the proper funnel or the proper flow, and that it didn't get lost or went to an incorrect team with some of our legacy solutions. And so... These are just some of the things that, were, again, allowed our attorneys to continue to focus in on the top of their license and their areas of expertise, opposed to some of these more meticulous tasks. And we were able to have the right partners and right partners in the room at the right time um, that really did allow us to foresee any of our hiccups, not even really related to the LSD side, as it is ensuring that the solution itself was properly connected and integrated with our internal solutions, our internal services that we've built and developed here at Wayfair. And so by having some of that forward thinking of ensuring um, that we had the right partners on the ServiceNow side, as well as um, ensuring that we were pulling in the right data and having the right, um, the, the correct integrations within our LSD solution. And so um, overall, it was a fairly painless process. Of course, there are always going to be um, there are always going to be learnings, both internally and also working with um, stakeholders and partners of what the expectations are. But always having those expectation management, change management, and ensuring that you identify those champions and bring your stakeholders along for the journey um, really does help and, and contribute to a more streamlined and, and smooth delivery process. Fantastic. And, and so I, I guess where you are right now in your journey, what, what would you say is kind of, if you're comfortable sharing, like your next six month, you know, or, or one year kind of vision as part of this, because transformation is constant. It's it's always a journey. But what would you say is kind of like the next area of focus um, for how, you know, legal service delivery might play a role? Yeah, absolutely. And so um, at a high level, we, I mean, I think we're all here familiar with some of the buzzwords within the technology space around machine learning, data science, artificial intelligence. And so Wayfair really does uh, lean into some of these innovative spaces. We have an entire department at Wayfair, Wayfair Next, that is continually evaluating the tools and solutions and processes that we leverage today to ensure that um, we're not just jumping at the, the buzzword at the time, but also that we're not getting stuck in some of the historical um, thought, thoughts of just, you know, doing it the way we've done it, because that's the way we've always done it. And so by having, um, by looking forward to some of these solutions that we leverage within our legal department across the, the eight to 10 verticals, we want to ensure that, you know, our contract lifecycle management solutions are um, properly incorporated um, within our LSD solution here, that our e-billing um, is also properly integrated, our, our e-discovery tools um, are not only integrated, but also uh, that we're leveraging the best solutions and we have the best uh, market pace or marketplace solutions to encourage um, more efficiency within our space. And so I think as we move through uh, the better part of next year, it's going to continue to dive deeper into some of our legal operational components um, and some of our, our solutions that we have in that space to ensure that we are leveraging them to the greatest capacity and also that we don't have duplication across uh, solutions or services and how that can pair well or potentially be replaced by um, some of the offerings that are uh, either offered today that are live within our LSD environment or that are also on a shared roadmap with the LSD product team. And so I think having that continual evaluation of what the services and tools you're leveraging and to ensure that you don't have duplication or that you, you can't possibly get rid of some of those tools to, to pull them in to some of these other solutions like LSD that we're leveraging today. So constantly kicking the tires and, and making sure that um, we are, are leveraging the, the best tools that are offered and, and that it makes the most sense for our team at a given time. 
So um, it kind of ties in with a live question we actually have. So I'll, I'll just ask it straight out. Um, what would you say, like, if you had to kind of count roughly, like the, the number of legal tools you have in your system, um, or, or, or like, I guess in your in your department, what would you say that is? Uh, yeah, I think that's a hard. Our department is so uh, wide ranging, like our global security team, for example. I mean, that's everything from our our security cameras at our warehouses and fulfillment centers to our incident management, um, all the way to supporting in partnership with our financial teams, our fintech teams within our integrations on that front. But those tools that are purely legal, I would say, were in a range of any, just probably hovering around 10 to 15 unique tools that we leverage um, in a more uh, dominant legal uh, department uh, solution on any given day. And so that can be everything from contract lifecycle management, e-discovery, e-billing, um, some of our communicate tools that we use to, to engage with some of our uh, outside counsel and also document storage. Um, that may not fall into the regular realms of our contracts, as well as um, even engaging with alternative legal service providers and, and how we do that with some of the innovative solutions in that space. And so it is pretty wide ranging on that regard. Um, but I would say anywhere from 10 to 15 tools we we are leveraging in a department um, uh, over the last 12 months. That that, that um, tallies up with, with what we hear from most customers. Typically, it's it's around ten to fifteen. Although we've seen it as as high as, and I cannot make this number up, um, fifty plus tools uh, in some very Incredible. organizational cases, which terrified me when I heard that. But the um, the the value that that legal service delivery brings here is because it's based on a strategic platform service. Now, it is that organizational wide intake system that can bring it in. It can do what we like to call the, those kind of Pareto's laws, those, that 80-20 um, intake, and where appropriate, act as an on-ramp to uh, a number of legal kind of what I like to refer to as surgical tools. They're really good at what they do, and we're not walking to that space. We, we view it as very collaborative. Uh, matter management is a wonderful example of that. We do the internal piece. Um, E-billing and spend management does the external matter management piece. Um, triggering off investigations, bringing you know HR to the table alongside IT and legal together. Um, that's a big power of what, what ServiceNow brings to this. So um, that brings the, I guess, the discussion point um, uh, uh, over here, but I'd like to just open it up to any other questions that people want. We had a number of Q&A that we answered. We also tried to answer a couple uh, online live as part of the questions. Um, but finally, if I had to have one kind of last question, if you were giving advice or mentoring, uh, you know, somebody that, that was kind of coming into legal operations and they had to start a legal operations transformation project, what, what would you tell them? Um, yeah, great question. I think change is constant. Innovation is going to continuously be moving us forward. There's always going to be space for efficiency gains, um, as well as the honest assessment of identifying blind spots. But I think one of the biggest uh, contributing factors of success is identifying our internal stakeholders. Um, you know, with my experience over the last you know, 10 plus years within legal technology and partnering with attorneys, um, from wide range of backgrounds, change management is always going to be a challenge. And, and I think that even exceeds or extends beyond the legal. Um, but leading that where it is, I think identifying those champions to bring along for the journey, those individuals that are really looking to lean into a solution that can really nudge the person sitting next to them um, or answer some quick questions on, on how to be more efficient or how to better leverage the tools at hand. And so for me, I think it's identifying those stakeholders, those champions, those end users that are really looking to, to invest time into learning the solution and that will also most likely engage and, and have the greatest impact or see the, the greatest efficiency gains by leveraging some of the new tools. And so I think having those champions and also building that trust and relationship with your stakeholders to know that you've identified a solution, you've taken the due diligence to evaluate the market and do that, that deep discovery work to ensure that you're not wasting their time on a tool that 
that's not going to solve their biggest pain points, but also that you're not going to be constantly swapping between tools where they're not going to have to learn just one tool, but um, God forbid the, the next 10 tools that will have to fill the gaps for the solution that you're introducing. So I think having that forward facing and forward looking um, ability to understand not only the current pain points, but the pain points that are around the corner, um, rather that be with uh, greater integrations to your solutions that are proprietary or, or leaning into some of the, the more offerings that are provided through the LSD solution. Um, I think really having that, that partnership and that trust with your stakeholders that you've done the work, you've identified the champions uh, that can really lean into this space to ensure that it's going to be successful um, and, and share the good news across uh, the org. Wonderful. Well, um, Andrew, we, we always love kind of chatting with you. Um, you're an oasis of kind of uh, knowledge and information in the space. You, you, you've been in it, in it for a while. So, so we love kind of uh, getting your insight and, and, and take on this. Uh, we're, we're happy to kind of host more of these events. Uh, we're going to be doing more in person over time. We'd love to kind of uh, uh, certainly meet you in person and speak at an event live. Uh, but I do hope everybody found this session useful. If there are any other questions, I think we've answered almost all of them. Actually, there's one more question, so I'll just uh, get to it. Um, has LSD been used for global trade control type requests? Um, I will answer that live as best I can. Um, global trade control, we've had a, a couple of customers doing it. It's not an out-of-the-box flow that we have. We we have... Um, uh, um, what do we call it? Um, stock preclearance. But I think global trade control, perhaps maybe that was, uh, if you reach out to us directly, we, we can tell you a little bit more. I don't know if that's to do with logistics, but if it is, I'm, I'm happy to respond to that. Uh, but with that, I'm going to take take this moment to just thank you, um, Andrew, for, uh, for speaking with us today. And we look forward to meeting you and chatting more uh, in the future. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, absolutely. Really appreciate the space and the opportunity. Um, and uh, definitely happy to continue the conversation with uh, you and other folks on the call. And um, to your point, taking it offline, uh, we have just taken over our global trade compliance team. So definitely leaning into that space and, and happy to kick the tires on that front as well with anyone here. So uh, looking forward to the future conversations. I really appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Well, that concludes our session today. Thank you to everyone who attended and to everyone who participated. Uh, we will make this recording available offline. And thank you again for your time.